to it, but as, as I'm listening, something really jumped out at me. I really like, I really like this passage of Hebrews. Um, verse, uh, verse 3 of chapter 11 says, uh, By faith we understand that the world was prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that were not seen. Paul is writing in a time when they didn't have the scientific understanding we do. We, going off a scientific explanation of the earth, understand there was a creation of the earth and an age of the earth that, uh, that, that, that we can understand a little bit better. And, and, and I have some friends and I have family members who are atheists, who don't believe in God, and, and they point to the scriptures and they point to how we talk about the scriptures and they point to science and they say they don't mix. And, and, and I keep coming back to a simple question. We have to have faith in what we believe. We have faith that God created all things. Their faith is in the Big Bang Theory. This theory that out of nothing, all of a sudden there was this giant explosion and things started flying off in every direction and particles started forming, uh, planets and stars and life and, what well, came before the Big Bang? Well, what was time and space before that was there? And my atheist friends and family just look at me and say, well, we don't know. But you have faith that that's the way it is. Yeah. Paul, without scientific understanding, understood that out of nothing, God created everything, ex nihilo. From nothing, everything comes into being. And this today that just stood out to me, and I went, yeah, that's right. We all on earth have faith, whether it's in God or in accidents. Somehow everything came into being. Now, that was my deviation. That just stood out to me, and I wanted just to share that. Uh, don't know why something was suddenly important to me. But it was. When does it make sense to follow what you see with your eyes? To put your faith and trust in what you see? To be led by that? And when does it make sense to follow your heart? That what you can't see but know in your heart to be true. That what you hold on to as a promise. Is this not our continued struggle as Christians? Don't we still, even though we have faith in God, still struggle with this duality of what we see and what we know and how they interact and what today we should follow? We as Christians, even though we believe, we still struggle with our faith. Yet we can't see the truth. There's nothing there we can hold on to. Still, as Christians, we believe it's undeniable. God's love for us, God's existence. Faith is the discussion that is foolishness. Faith is talk that makes no sense. Faith is ridiculous talk to those who don't know Christ. For the wisdom of God is foolishness to the Greeks. We live in a world today that in America, more people don't accept God than that do We're moving in that direction. And when we talk about faith, it falls upon ears that don't understand and hearts that don't get it and minds that don't see. It is foolishness and ridiculousness. Yet, it is also elusive for us as Christians. We struggle to have faith. We struggle to hold on to our faith. We struggle to understand what it means today. Because nothing is static. The faith that we had yesterday isn't the faith we have today. And we still struggle to hold on to a faith and to understand God. Today we're going to take a look at some of the reasons why it's hard for us to have faith. We will also dwell into some of the date into some dangerous territory today. We like it when the pastor goes into dangerous areas, don't we? Because that usually means I'm going right after somebody. We'll be looking at our driving motivations. So hold on tight and get ready to look into your hearts a little bit today. Let us begin with prayer. 
Gracious and almighty God, we looked at your word today and uh, we try to understand. Help us to see a little more clearly. Help your word to come to life for us that it might truly be a lamp unto our feet and to a light to our path that we might see where we're going a little bit more clearly, to understand you a little bit more, to hold on to faith a little bit harder, and to rejoice in that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Faith is a, a very large topic, and so since we have about three hours today, we've canceled the bowling, and we're going to sit here for three hours and talk about faith. Dennis is over here going to... Faith is, for the most part, difficult for us because it doesn't give us a full picture. We want to say, I have faith in God, but, but truly, that doesn't mean that we fully understand God. No way we could. We want to say we have faith that God is working on our life, but that doesn't mean we know where our life is leading or what it will lead us to do or be. Faith gives us only small little vignettes of what's before us. A little picture of what the next step is, that we might step out in that faith. Truth be known, if most of us knew where we were going, we wouldn't have made that first step. We would have chosen something else. My wife and I, as I have said before, had we known what ministry meant, we might not have made that step. We spent over an hour last night talking to our niece back on the East Coast going, that happened? That happened? When did that happen? Realizing we are so out of touch with our family because we're 3,000 miles away. Had we known all of that, we would have really rethought what ministry meant. Or at least rethought on how wide I would have cast that net. Missy might have said, no, 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 East Coast only. By faith, we stepped out and found that God was leading us in places that by fear we would not have gone on our own. But we didn't get a full picture. We only got little bits of the picture. And we stepped out in that little bit and we said, that was enough. We'll do what you're saying. But we all want safety. We all kind of want to know the details of what's coming next. And this is where faith and our own personalities clash because in our desire to know and in our desire to be safe, faith has a struggle to work in our lives. Faith never gives a full picture. But we want answers. We want the details. And that's something that's born within us. We're, that's natural for us. You, you know your kids, your grandkids, your great-grandkids. What do they ask more than anything else? Why? Time for bed. Why? Time to go to school. Why? Time to get dressed. Why? Time to get undressed. Why? <laughs> it is a question that drives some parents crazy. Now, when I was a kid, I remember, I remember thinking, I am not going to do to my kids. I'm not going to tell them what my parents told me. <laughs> because I said so. I hated that. When I would ask a question, especially as a teenager, I had in my mind a pretty good reason for my question, and what I got back was because I said so. And I said, you know what? When my boys or kids are old enough, I'm going to give them answers. I'm going to talk to them like they're people. I'm going to do better than my parents. Well, then, lo and behold, I had kids that were just like me. Why? 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 Dad, I got a plan. I got a plan. I, you got to hear this, Dad. If, if I tell you what, oh, and I know, you're going to agree with me. No. Why not? Because I said so. <laughs> <laughs> We're naturally born into this desire to know what's next and to know all the details. And by golly, we're Presbyterians. We're going to be decent and in order, which means it's going to be well planned out. That's why Presbyterians have a hard time adjusting their ship in midstream. Yeah. We're learning. Faith is that ability to say, I don't have all the answers, but I'm going to take that step. What we're called into is embracing mystery. Right? Life is a mystery. 
When you said yes to your spouse or yes to your job, you didn't really know all that you were getting into. You didn't know what was going to be held way in the future. All you knew is that you had enough information to know that was the job I wanted. That was the house I wanted to buy. We wanted to have kids. We wanted to get married. We had enough to be able to move and embrace the mystery of what lies before us with hope and anticipation. But it was still a mystery. And today, as Christians, when we struggle with the what's next and the why's and the where's my faith, our job is to embrace mystery that doesn't come with good explanation. A mystery that only comes with a promise that we are going to be guided and walked beside. Sometimes even carried. Fear, though, is the opposite of faith. Fear is the antithesis of faith. It's what holds us back. Faith moves forward. Faith holds us back. Faith goes on and does great things. And fear says, no, let's think about this a little bit longer. So we not only have to embrace mystery and be willing to have faith, we have to be willing to let go of fear and put that behind us. The trouble is today, in America especially, we see fear taking hold in new ways. We see things happening that are happening because people are afraid, they're frustrated. And our nation is at a crossroads today. Our city is at a crossroads today. Even our church is at a crossroads. This isn't one issue that we're talking about. We're looking at a much larger picture where case after case, point after point, we're seeing fear taking over and faith taking a back seat in our church, in our city, in our nation. It's an important time for us to be paying attention. And you can define what we're talking about any way you want. You can take any difficult situation that's happening throughout our country today, and you can take either side of that issue. And you can know that today I am talking to you. It doesn't matter which side of any debate you're on. It doesn't matter which issue you're talking about. Today I am talking to you. The point here today is not to tell you which road you should take. Trust me, I have plenty of opinions on which road you should take. But I've been told not to say which road you should take. I've been pulled back because that's not the issue. The issue aren't the individual issues that we're facing, and we're facing quite a few, and we're engaging them individually and as a church and as a family, but that's not what the point of today's sermon is. Not to tell you which road to take, but today we want to stop for a moment. I want to stop and I want to ask you, what is your navigation system? I struggled with this. I struggled with the wording. I struggled with how to say that. But I also struggled with what did it mean. A navigation system, it sounds a little hokey. It sounds a little funny. But, but let me ask, what directs your actions and emotions? What's directing your thought process today? In verse 9, we're told that, uh, that Abraham was led. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land that he had been promised, as a foreign land, living in tents, as in Isaac and Jacob, Jacob, who were heirs with him in the same promise. Today, what are you led by? You have faith in what? You have faith in who? Now, that's a real simple question. If I asked any Christian here today, what do you have faith in? Your answer can be real simple, isn't it? What's your faith in? But that's too simple. Today I'm going to tell you that's not the right answer. It's just too easy. It doesn't mean much. We can go to any of the hot spots in America today where people are divided. 
where people are on different sides of the street, sometimes unfortunately in the middle of the street fate, facing each other, and you can ask them if they're Christian, what they believe in, and their answer is going to be God, and they can be diametrically opposed to one another and still have the same answer. It doesn't mean that much when it becomes a trite answer, when it's in our back pocket, we just pull it out when we need it. We don't give it a whole lot of thought. At this crossroads, you have to ask yourself a very serious question. What is your faith in? Yes, God and Jesus are the obvious answers. They are the right answers, except it's not enough. What is your faith in? Is your faith in a God that desires to have a relationship with you? Let me ask that question again, because I don't think you understood I'm actually asking you a question. Is your faith in God a God that desires to have a relationship with you? Does God desire an eternal relationship with you or a temporary relationship with you? Eternal. I was hoping you would say that. And I believe, again, if we went to every hotspot in America and we stopped everybody for just a moment and were able to dialogue with them just a little bit and ask them that question, they would say the same thing. They would give the same answer. They wouldn't give a different answer. Many of these people even truly believe that answer. Not just something they were taught, not something they learned, but they, they tried to live that, they know that. But does that faith really guide our actions? Abraham was guided. He packed up and left. Took his family, departed his ancestral home, and he went off into an area that he knew nothing about. On top of that, he was promised something ridiculous, wasn't he? Sarah was well past the age of having children. She was barren, had no children. He was well past the age of being able to have procreate to procreate, they say. We know what that word means. And God sent them out on a promise, not only that God would give them a land, but that his descendants would be more than the stars in the sky, more numerous than the grains of sand on the beach. Now, Sarai, when she got this promise, she laughed. She couldn't believe it. God promised Abraham and Sarah something that was wonderful, number one, to have a land of their own, but, but something that was ridiculous, number two, and they stepped out on faith packed everything up, and moved. God called Abraham into something that was beyond his understanding, and certainly into something different. And Abraham, Abraham as Sarah, had faith and moved. What of, his, what of though, his subsequent generations? Did his subsequent generations have the same faith? Were they as faithful as Abraham was? No. Time and again, God had to send messengers and prophets to the descendants of Abraham to call them back to the right path. When the world wanted to do what it wanted, they followed their own selfish ambitions. When they became self-righteous, morally and spiritually superior, they would time and again go that direction. Time and again, God would go back and say, you're bankrupt. You stray and call them back. Time and again, God would provide a way for them to return. And time and again, they too were at a crossroads, just as we are today. What is our compass today? We struggle in many ways. And let me affirm that these struggles that we face are complicated. There is no simple answer for any of this. But allow me to challenge us with a question. Allow me to challenge us with a question that will hopefully give us all just a moment of pause. The question is, does God approve the way that you are, we are, living out our faith? Does God approve of the results of how we live out our faith. I would suggest right now 
and God is bitterly disappointed. I would say that if God were providing the answers and the leadership here in person in America today, that America would look very different. I would say that our own self-righteousness has allowed us to do unspeakable things just because we feel we are right. We fight, we slander, we degrade, we dehumanize, we denigrate, we trample, we take, we bicker, we spread rumors, we march, we protest, all because we believe that our righteousness exceeds the righteousness of those around us, and it does not. God does not approve of our own self-righteousness, and never has. God does not approve of how we are living out our faith. We today glorify ourselves. We don't glorify God. Yet, faith still beckons. Faith is called. And it's not an easy call for us to answer with integrity. It's a struggle for us. Always is a struggle for us. Faith calls us to leave so much behind like Abraham, to leave behind all that he had. We are called to leave behind so much. Faith calls us forward with far less than what we've had. It calls us out of our safety, out of our security. Faith calls us out of what is familiar. It calls us out of our pride, out of ourselves. And what's worth is, what's worse is, faith always calls us to lose ourselves. Faith always calls us to lose ourselves for the benefit of others. Abraham left. He left Ur, was called out of Ur, and moved into a, a land that was foreign to him so that God's people might thrive. God calls the church into being. Not that you and I would somehow be eternally blessed, but so that the world around us be blessed because we have been so blessed. Because we become that blessing. Remember, faith never shows us a full picture. It gives us just this small little snapshot of what's ahead of us. If we had a full picture, we wouldn't step out. Today, faith is calling us and beckoning us. The world is different. Let's face it, folks. What we're used to is no longer available to us. It's not here anymore. It's gone. Faith calls us into something we have no idea what's going to look like tomorrow. I've been listening to podcasts, trying to find answers, listening to different people speak, and, uh, and some people are truly believing that the next generation, the next emendation of the church will be digital. And I don't know how to answer that. I don't know how to move into that. I don't know what that looks like. But by faith, we're trying to move into the digital, figure that out a little bit more. Faith gives us a small snapshot and beckons us to step forward out of what we know, to leave behind what we're familiar with, what gives us comfort and safety. Today, let us work very hard to let fear go. Let us embrace faith. Let us be bold. Let us embrace change and leave things behind so that others might live. And let faith be our guide. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, the words sound good sometimes, and it's still a mystery to us. We don't really know what that means to have faith in you and where you're leading, because we don't know where we're going. So today, give us hope. Remove from us our doubt and our fears, and replace it with your love and our faith in you. Be clear in your call that we might hear. Let your spirit fall upon us. Fall upon us in abundance. Fall upon your, this country. Make it your own. Help us, God, to be your people once again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.